we played well, good team. The game was at Ballymore Stadium, which is a great venue. And uh, um, at that time, we were still pretty fresh. So uh, that was good. Uh, and uh, that, that was really a, a great victory for us that yeah. game. That, really got that, that may have been the best game we played, I think. That and Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sydney we played real tough. Yeah. Yeah. And it seemed like we were, not only were we, you know, not like Ned said, we were still fresh, but there are two things happened as we kind of moved south. We moved into, you know, the higher, greater population areas and frankly, the better rugby. You know? Yeah. Better competition. It was a New South Wales country team. It was a rep, rep team from the countryside, uh, New South Wales country, and uh, won that game as well. Uh, was that the game where we had all the wind? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were behind at half. To, I don't think we scored a point in the first half, and they scored all their points in the first half, and we scored all our points in the second half. However, we scored more points in our second half than they scored in their first half. Yeah. But the wind... I've never seen a game so dominated by wind. Yeah. How I many guys were kicking balls backwards? We went back to Ballymore and we played the Queensland state team, the provincial team, which was, you know, a significant upgrade in competition. It was a good game. We were competitive, but they had, you know, a number of rep pro players on their team. And, uh, they and probably had, how many did they have? Five or remember. six wallabies on that yeah, team. I know that. Uh, the second row that I played against, Stuart Gregory, was a was a Wallaby second row, and it was a you know big thrill to, to play against him. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure so we he, lost that game. I'm sure he's still talking about that. Oh, he's still talking about <laughs> playing against me. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I learned a lot about refereeing rugby <laughs> on that trip, and the main thing I learned about uh, Australian and New Zealand referees in those days, they didn't call very much. They didn't blow the whistle very often. They were there to basically just keep things under control. And they had a few things that they would, they would look for, but uh, not a whole lot. And they uh, it came to appreciate the style of refereeing where they really um, didn't make their presence known unless they absolutely had to. So uh, we, we got to understand and know the referees and, and how they refereed the game, and I think it made the game a lot of fun for us. Our fly half, Steve Finau, had attended Sydney University uh, a couple years prior to coming over here and was teammates with a lot of the guys on the Sydney University team. So uh, there was that element to it, to a, plus the fact that the 65 game between Cal and Sydney Union University down there was a legendary contest. And uh, I think Sydney won in the end nine to six or something like that, but uh, they're still talking about that game down there. So this was a, this was a, uh, a big game for everybody involved. Uh, we played great. Uh, we were very disappointed that we had lost in the end, uh, but they, their fly half was a fellow by the name of Rupert Rosenblum, who was a Wallaby fly half. And uh, he basically won the game for them in the end with his kicking. And, uh, but uh, I, I think as, uh, as captain, I was most proud of, uh, of uh, how we performed uh, uh, that night. And uh, we gained an awful lot of respect from yeah. the Sydney University players. Yeah, yeah. I remember. And I think we felt, sorry, George, sorry. I think we felt that we sort of lived up 
a bit to the yeah. 65 team rep, rep, uh, reputation by by our performance there. That, that, that's well said. I think uh, one thing, I, we were ahead for a lot of that game. Yes, we were. Yeah, and it was just at the end that they came back and beat us. And I remember after the game, you know, you do the jersey exchange and uh, and I traded jerseys with Weatherfell and I still have the jersey. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think I can wear it, but I still have it. <laughs> We had a 20-player roster, and we played two games a week for four weeks. So it was an issue. Uh, and you know, of the 20 players, you know, two or three of the guys didn't play a whole lot of minutes. So we had you know 17 guys uh, maybe playing most of the minutes. So you know, it caught up to us in the end, but. Uh, after Queensland, we went out to Canberra, which is the capital of Australia, for our fifth game. And that was a great trip because it was, you know, being a capital and, and all of that, they really wanted to put on a good reception for us. And, and, and they did. And uh, uh, we were fortunate enough, we, 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 we beat uh, a team that's called, was called at the time ACT, or Australian Capital Territory. Uh, now today, and they were good, and we beat them. Today, they would be probably the best provincial side in Australia. Uh, and so a lot has changed between now and, and then, but uh, that was another, another good victory. Cliff Simmons was on a trip, and Cliff volunteered to come along as kind of the manager. And uh, uh, he used to carry out around a big old white bag that had the uh, the jerseys and shorts and stock, socks. And you know, somehow he'd get them. I think normally somebody with our host family or somebody would would actually do the laundry, but Cliff would arrange would arrange for for it. And he was really great. He did a he did an outstanding yeah. job. Yeah. And uh, he took on the name White Bag because <laughs> you never saw him without the big old white bag over his shoulder. It so. was always Doc and I always said, where's the white bag? <laughs> so we started calling Cliff the White Bag. But, uh, but uh, no, it was, that was pretty, uh, pretty rudimentary, actually. We had, uh, we had team bags that, uh, this is kind of interesting, we had team bags that carry around our, our gear and stuff. And I'm not sure if it was Doc or Paul got this kit where you could make these bags out of this kit. <laughs> so we all had to go down to the uh, the, the, the training the uh, the equipment room at uh, at Harmon Gym and go in there and we take our kit and we had to sew together our team bags. They had a sewing machine in the in the equipment room, so we go down there before we left and sew our team bags together and those were our team bags. Well, that we remember took. that right in University of California, Golden Bears, rugby, and your name, you had the stencil. Yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a duffel bag is yeah. what it was. Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah right. just kind so, of throw it yeah. over your shoulder duffel bag. So, you know, a lot of stuff that got done, we kind of got, got it done among ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. In those days, a little different. Yeah. Now the other, the other personality worth mentioning um, that had an influence on all of us no, yeah. is Truck Collum. Yeah. And Truck was our, he was all of our freshman football coach, and he was, you know, he was a god to all of us, and he was the guano coach for rugby, which is the entry team for that most of us played on at one time or another. And I think, you know, I think Truck really attracted a lot of football players that might not have been attracted to yeah, rugby. Yeah, no doubt about it. Because yeah. he knew all of us. He was our freshman football coach. And for some of us, freshman football was our first and last experience of football at Cal. And then, and then we wanted to do something else. And, uh, and uh, you know, Truck would suggest, well, if you guys like contact sports, and, you know, and I know who, I know who you are, and you should go try rugby. Yeah. 
and uh, and he was. I mean, he was. I remember the day he died. I mean, every, you know, it was a sad day. Yeah, sure he was, was a wonderful, yeah. wonderful guy. One of the great things about an international tour, especially uh, to Australia or New Zealand or the big rugby playing countries, is that's where you really learn to understand the culture of rugby and you know the camaraderie and the competitiveness on the field but the camaraderie off the field and uh, I think it was a great lesson for all of us.